Good evening, everybody from North Georgia. It's been a couple days since you saw me last, and it's looking kind of like the hurricane is going to end up just completely missing us. We might get a little bit of rain, but we're not going to get any of the big precipitation that I was hoping for. So because of that, we're just going to have to work with the conditions that we have, and they are not the best. It's very dry. Uh, it is at least nice and cool today, so there should be snakes on the surface. We're going to be mostly flipping today, flipping rocks and tins, so we're going to get into habitat, and I will let you guys know what we find. The big thing I want to see is a milk snake or a timber rattlesnake, so. Well, here's our first herp of the day, and it's a pretty good one. A very, very vibrant little red salamander. Check that guy out. Super, super bright. All right, well, this guy has been ridiculously uncooperative. Um... I'm assuming it's because he's slightly dry, but we've been keeping him nice and wet, poured a lot of water on his rock. So it actually is surprisingly wet underneath a lot of the things we've been flipping, despite the fact it hasn't rained much. And it is nice and cool out here. It's only about 64 degrees, and I think that's about as warm as it's going to get today. So pretty good weather despite the drought, and that's a pretty good start. Beautiful salamander. This guy actually has a black chin, which is characteristic of the black chin red salamander, which barely ranges into Georgia. So it's kind of neat to see one that has such a distinct black chin look to it in North Georgia, but really fantastic looking salamander. I'm going to let him crawl back under his rock and we're going to keep going. Well, do you see the babies? <laughs> that is awesome. Look at that. That is a mother and fresh baby copperheads. Holy crap. Super late in the year to be seeing this. That is amazing. I really, I'm really shocked that this thing dropped its babies so late. It's the first time I've ever flipped anything like that, too. All right, well, we are going to try our best to uh, leave these snakes as undisturbed as possible. But since we flipped them, which is kind of weird, I don't normally see uh, mother snakes with their babies under rocks because normally I know where they're going to be. This was completely unexpected. There actually is another baby here. So there's mom, three, four babies there, and then five. the fifth baby. Are there five babies here? Mm -hmm. There are five heads that I see. Five heads. And then this is the Are you sixth. sure you see five heads? Yeah, there's one that's like tucked back in there. Yeah, like little. right okay, underneath. That is so cool though. So generally mother vipers will stay with their babies until they shed, so that's why she's still hanging out under here with them. And she's actually quite defensive mm -hmm. uh, towards us. Normally when you find copperheads in the field like this, they aren't terribly aggressive, like you won't get struck at terribly often um, unless you actually mess with them and this snake has struck at me several times just sitting here watching her, but you can see how the babies are kind of sticking close by her. And uh, they're active, but they're not leaving and not running away from their mother. So really cool example of parental care in vipers. Really something we don't get to see very often. So really cool to actually see it happening here. But we are going to slowly begin the process of trying to replace this rock so that these snakes can continue their business. So yeah, I think we're gonna have to move these guys out of the way to put their rock back, unfortunately. Um, I really, normally when I'm interacting with vipers, I try to minimize any actual interaction, but since we have flipped this rock, we don't wanna risk pinching anybody when we put it down. So we're gonna move all these guys and let them crawl back under, but that is super cool. What a way to start the day. All right, little guys, rock is replaced. This area we're in right now is actually already super disturbed to the point where I wasn't even really expecting to see anything under these rocks because it's so heavily maintained and upkept, which really sucks to see in like a natural area like this, that this area is being toned down so much, I guess for the sake of hikers, but evidently it isn't bothering these guys too much. So we're just gonna make sure they go back under their rock or this one next to it. There's one over here already making his way back under. And then we're gonna keep herping, see what else we can turn up. But what a fantastic start to the day. Well, there's another snake already, so I guess I'm gonna put on the GoPro since there's plenty of stuff out already, but nice Eastern Garter snake. We have been seeing no shortage of these guys lately, although I think this is the first one I've seen here. Seems like snakes are out in decent numbers, so I'm gonna strap the GoPro up and we're gonna keep flipping. Hopefully there will be some more snakes to come. Oh, there's tongue stuck out there. It's kinda cool, you can actually see this guy without flipping the rock. I, uh, I flipped it before I saw him, but it's just barely sticking out. It's kinda cool. All right, Caitlin just flipped our first racer of the day. Little baby one. We've seen a couple of these at this spot before flipping rocks, so we might see more, but really nice. First snake we've seen in a while. That one little area where we found the copperheads is also where we found the garter snake. And of course, since I put the GoPro on, I have not flipped another snake. 
All right, well, this little guy is feisty and in shed, so we're just gonna let him crawl back under his rock and keep flipping, but all the copperheads, garter snake, and a baby racer so far. All right, well, we are making our way to our next spot of the day. This spot was not as productive as I was hoping, but just seeing those copperheads made my day already. I mean, that's a super cool natural history observation. So today is the last day of September, and uh, I normally see copperheads dropping their babies in August. So, I mean, that thing's a month, pretty much a full month behind when I would expect to see a copperhead with freshly dropped babies. So that's super weird, super interesting natural history observation, and it might even be significant, I don't know. All right, well that is a bear and cubs. Uh-oh, <laughs> okay, she's running away. Well, that was kind of cool. Hello, brother. We got another one. What's up, dude? He's eating some nuts. Hey, buddy. <laughs> He's so cute. I love bears so much. <laughs> Was that a barb? <laughs> That's a bear. He's like a dog. I love his eating noises. I know. I liked his bulb. I feel like I'm very shaky. That's fine. That is so cool. I love them so much. I love seeing them. Much, much more so from the car. Seeing them on foot's a little scary. <laughs> but that is just so awesome. I mean, that thing's 10 feet away from us, just chilling. Eating, uh, eating nuts, eating acorns. Man's is just completely unbothered eating acorns on the side of the road. You love to see it. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. All right, we'll leave that guy alone. Try to find some more snakes. Oh, huge ring neck. Look at that guy. Well, it only took all day to find one, but there is a huge ring neck. We are definitely in the inner grade zone up here because last time we were in this area, we flipped a pure looking Northern and a pure looking Southern under the same rock. And generally Northerns are a lot bigger, but very nice. This is our first snake at our next spot for the day. Maybe our last spot of the day, depending on how long it takes us to hit this stuff. So there you go, dude. brown snake well our last spot didn't produce too much but i just flipped a little carpet that my buddy sent me a pin for and uh it produced a snake not the mole king i was hoping for but a nice little brown snake nice addition to the diversity for the day all right everyone well our last few stops of the day were not very productive and really the only stop that was super productive was the first stop and uh after that, we really didn't see any concentrations of snakes, just a few random things here and there, and really the bear was the highlight of the afternoon after the copperheads. At least the bear we got a good look at. There were uh, at least three total, including the two that we saw while we were walking, which I think was a mom and one cub. I only ever saw one cub, but we obviously steered very clear of that situation because that is the number one way to get in trouble with bears. So. Uh, yeah, it was a really good day all around in the mountains. Always a good time up there. Um, and finding those copperheads was just super weird, super unexpected, and a really great highlight to start off this episode. I am going to be getting out again tomorrow, so I'm gonna go get some sleep and I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It is the next day and we are going to be doing a little bit of Piedmont road cruising today. It's super dry and uh, it's forecasted to be pretty hot, but we have a nice cool morning. Uh, it's been in the 50s in the morning the last couple of days, so we're going to have at least a couple hours before it gets hot, and we're going to be driving around hoping to see a snake or a timber rattlesnake. Those are the two main things we want to see out here, so uh, without wasting any more time, we're going to get to it, and I will let you guys know what we find. 
All right, well, here is our first snake of the day, a beautiful juvenile Eastern hognose. Look at that. Awesome orange coloration on the neck. That's fantastic. Oh, that is such a great way to start the day. And uh, not really something I was expecting to see today, always hoping to see one, but in the Piedmont, they are not terribly common. And we don't typically see a lot of them on the road. That's actually the first thing I've cruised in this particular stretch of road too. Really great. This guy is way better at scaling this embankment than I was expecting him to be. Look at that orange color. Fantastic. Love me an Eastern Hognose. And I think that is the first one we have day cruised this fall in the Piedmont. So really great way to start the day. It's just so dusty and dry out here. I wasn't really expecting to see anything. So that is awesome. He kind of took a dump on his own head. It's pretty gross. What beautiful snake. We aren't gonna mess with him too much because we don't want him to play dead. We're just gonna let this guy keep crawling and get back to road cruising. Look at this thing climbing. This is like a straight up cliff and he's just going right up it. We see the southern hog noses all the time struggle to even get up the slightest embankment and this thing is just straight up climbing like almost a sheer rock cliff. And it happened again. That hog nose was the only thing of interest we saw yesterday. In fact, I think it was the only animal we saw crossing the road. Granted, I had to do a half day because I had somewhere to be yesterday afternoon, but still, the quality has been there this week, but the quantity has not. We've been seeing some really cool stuff, just not a lot of snakes. So with that being said, I'm going to get out today and try to wrap this episode up so that we can get out two videos this week, albeit it is still very dry. So we're hoping for rain whenever that can be possible. It's looking like probably not until late next week at this point, which is a real bummer, but we're going to have to work with it. October is one of the best months of the year. And uh, just because the weather's a little bit wonky doesn't mean that it's not going to be good. So hopefully we'll be able to find some stuff. So 